The first cartilage is the thyroid cartilage, which is the largest laryngeal cartilage. And the function of this thyroid cartilage is to protect the larynx. The thyroid cartilage consists of two lamina which meet in the front at an angle, this angle and this angle is known as thyroid angle. This thyroid angle is approximately 90 degrees in males and approximately 120 degrees in females. Therefore, the third angle is more acute in males as compared to female. Therefore, in males, this angle is more prominent and it is known as Adam's apple or laryngeal prominence. Each of the third lamina is quadrilateral in shape and has an upper border, anterior border, lower border and a posterior border. Two surfaces, an outer surface and an inner surface. The upper part of the anterior border of both the lamina do not fuse with each other. Instead, there is a notch. This notch is known as thyroid notch. So, only the lower part of the anterior border helps in the formation of the thyroid angle or the laryngeal prominence. Now we will draw the lateral view of the thyroid lamina. The upper border of the thyroid cartilage is convexo-concave from before backwards and the lower border is straight in front or convex and then later on becomes concave. The anterior border of the both the thyroid lamina join together to form the thyroid angle and we have already seen that the upper part of the anterior border was not meeting with each other and forming a notch which was known as the thyroid notch. The posterior borders are free and extends upward as a superior cornu and extends downwards as an inferior cornu of the thyroid cartilage. So this was the superior cornu and this is the inferior cornu of the thyroid cartilage. The upper border of the thyroid cartilage as well as the superior cornu is attached to the higher bone above. This is the greater cornu, this is the lesser cornu of the higher bone by a membrane which is known as the thyrohyoid membrane. So this membrane was known as thyrohyoid membrane. Okay. The medium part of this thyrohyoid membrane gets thickened up to form the median thyrohyoid ligament. So this was the median thyroid ligament and the lateral part of this thyroid membrane also gets thickened up to form another ligament which is known as lateral thyroid ligament. In this diagram, if we also draw the trichoid cartilage here, then in the median plane, the lower border is attached to the arch of the trichoid cartilage by a ligament which is known as conus elasticus and rest of the lower border gives attachment to a muscle which is extending to the trichoid cartilage and this muscle is known as the cricothyroid muscle.
the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage forms a synovial joint with the cricoid cartilage at the junction of the arch and the lamina of the cricoid cartilage. On the outer surface of the thyroid lamina, two tubercles are present. The first tubercle is the superior thyroid tubercle, which is present just in front of the root of the superior cornu, and an inferior thyroid tubercle, which is present just behind the middle of the inferior border. Here. Yeah. These two tubercles are joined together by a line, which is known as oblique line, whose direction is downwards and forwards. This oblique line gives attachment to three important muscles. The first muscle from above downwards is the thyroid muscle, which is attached above to the hard bone. So this is the thyroid muscle. Just below the thyroid muscle is the attachment of the sternothyroid muscle. So this is the sternothyroid muscle going downwards to get attachment to the sternum. So this was the sternothyroid muscle. And below the sternothyroid muscle, the oblique line gives attachment to the thyropharyngeus part of the inferior constrictor muscle. So, this is the inferior constrictor muscle. So, this is the attachment of the thyropharyngeus part of the inferior constrictor muscle of the pharynx. Okay, between the inferior constrictor and the sternothyroid muscle, in this gap lies the upper pole of the later lobe of the thyroid gland. Therefore, the between the attachment of the inferior constrictor on the oblique line and the sternothyroid muscle here in this gap lies the upper pole of the later lobe of the thyroid gland. Therefore, the upper pole of the later lobe thyroid gland extends to the oblique line. This free posterior border of the thyroid cartilage gives attachment to a conjoint tendon which is formed by a combination of three muscles which is the stylopharyngeus, palatopharyngeus and the salpingopharyngeus muscle. So the conjoint tendon of these three muscles is attached to the posterior free border of the thyroid cartilage. So this completes the thyroid cartilage. Now we'll see the next cartilage that is the cricoid cartilage.